Hello everyone, my name is Dara Simi and I am your study abroad body. So if you're looking forward to study outside of your own country, this is a family that you should join. So you can do well by subscribing to my channel so that you can get updates on new videos. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing some important visa interview questions that you should prepare for when you are going for your Poland study visa interview. Um, so for these interview questions, they are specific to each person. So these questions may be based on the documents that you submitted, who your sponsor is, where your sponsor lives, your previous degree and the degree you would be going for, the responses you give to the previous questions you've been asked. Without wasting any time, let's just get right into this video. Number one question in no particular order, what is the purpose of your traveling? You don't need to beat around the bush. You are going to Poland to study. What is the purpose of your traveling? I'm going into Poland to study. I'm going for my master's degree. I'm going for my bachelor's degree. I'm going for my PhD. Simple and straight to the point. What is the name of your school? What do you know about your school? So for this question, you want to do your research about your school. You want to know some specific information about your school, such as the year it was founded, the city it's founded in. Also tell them about the ranking of your university, what your university is known for. Is your university the top when it comes to agricultural science? Is your university the best when it comes to economies in Poland? Just do your research about your university and give them this information. What course will you be going for? What subjects will you be doing or what courses will you be taking? So this is quite different from the course you'll be going for. What subjects will you be taking or courses will you be taking? So for this question, go to your departmental website. Look at the courses that you'll be taking for the first semester, second semester. You know, for all the semesters you are going to be taking. If you can tell them at least 10, I mean, it's fine. Just tell them the courses that you'll be Taking. If you cannot get the information on your university website or your departmental website, you can send an email to your department that you need the list of courses that you'll be offering when you get into Poland. Who is your sponsor? So just tell them who your sponsor is. If your sponsor is your mother, tell them it's your mother. If it is your father, if it is your uncle, if it's your brother, your sister, just tell them whoever is sponsoring you and the name of the person. And please ensure that this information tallies with what you've presented in all of your documents. So if you are presenting documents that your mother is your sponsor, you don't want to tell them that your brother is your sponsor. This can affect the visa decision. How much did you pay for accommodation or have you paid for accommodation? So I'm going to give you a practical example of what happened during my own case. So when I went for my own visa interview, I have not paid for my accommodation. But I was given a document um, from my university. The document was in Polish. It starts with Z-A-S. It's Polish. So what I did was that I made use of Google Translate to get the information that was on this document. So on this document, um, I mean, a lot of information were written on it. But one information that I took particular note of was that I had paid my um, tuition fee. I'm not owing tuition fee. And also for my accommodation, I'm not required to pay any money for accommodation. That accommodation has been received for me. And what my university did when it comes to accommodation was that um, there is a time frame whereby they are going to send you a link. You have to make um, hostel reservation. So I already made my reservation. So when I was asked this question, my response was that no, I've not paid for my accommodation. My school does not require me to pay for accommodation until I get into Poland, but I already made a reservation online when the registration was open. And that was it. I know Polish embassy deny people if they don't have um, accommodation, but in my own case, I had accommodation. My accommodation has been reserved. And also, my university wrote a letter to back up my claim. And I knew about it. That is why I'm going to advise you when you are applying for your visa, make use of the university accommodation. At least stay in your university accommodation for one semester. At least, at least stay in your university accommodation for one semester. They can also ask you the amount that you're supposed to pay for your university accommodation. They can ask you the amount you're supposed to pay 
for your tuition fee. Do you have a previous degree? Yes or no? What was your previous degree about? You want to tell them what you did in your previous degree. And they can also ask you, what is the relationship between your previous degree and the degree you are going for? In my own case, my previous degree wasn't the same as what I was going for. So I'm going to explain this so that you can understand. So for my previous degree, I studied microbiology. But for the current degree I'm doing, I'm doing food science and human nutrition. So what is the correlation between microbiology and food science and human nutrition? So I was able to look for common grants between my previous degree and the degree I was going for. And another thing that I think helped me was that before choosing food science, I didn't choose food science because this was what was available or anything. I knew what I wanted. I knew why I was going for food science. So it was easy for me to give a response to the question. So when I was asked that question, my response was that in my previous degree, I did a course which was introduction to food science. And also during my third year as an undergraduate, I did um, food microbiology. In this course, I learned about hazard analysis and critical control points where um, I was taught the importance of HACCP when it comes to food safety, blah, 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 blah. And also during my undergraduate thesis, I worked on isolation and pathogenicity of spoilage fungi of sweet potato. So during this project, I was opportunity to learn about microorganisms that causes spoilage in sweet potato how we can you know make our food safe these were the things that picked my interest in food safety so for me to learn more about food safety i need to go for food science for my postgraduate study so that is why i'm going to study food science and that was it if your previous degree is a bit different from what you're going to do for your postgraduate study, you want to look for a common ground between all of these courses. You don't want to pick a course just because, oh, this, this course is available. Some people reach out to me and ask me, what course is like the cheapest? You don't want to go to school just because a course seems cheap. Even if this course seems cheap, you still want to have like a correlation because I feel people look down on Poland and be like oh it's Poland if I apply they automatically they they should they should give me um a positive response I saw an email from the university whereby they listed the requirements that they are looking for before giving admission they were like okay for those that have um, a first class they are going to consider them first after considering the people that are the first class they are going to consider the people that have a second class um upper before considering people that has a second class lower. So in this case, you need to pray to God that first class and second class upper should not apply. Like a lot of them should not apply. You want to know why you're applying for a course, not only because this course is cheap. Even if you're going for a course of study just because you feel like, okay, this is what I can afford. Please do your research very well. Look for common ground. I also ask you that what are your future plans? What is your future ambition? Either your previous degree is the same as what you are doing for your master's or it is different. They can ask you this question. In the previous video I made about the documents that you need to submit, I made mention of a cover letter. So make sure that whatever answer you are giving is the same as what is in your cover letter. It doesn't have to be word for word. I think that is why um, visa decision takes 14 days. So they note down your responses and then they cross-check everything with all the documents that you are submitting. That is why you should not give different answers from the documents that you've submitted. You can also be asked which other schools you applied to. In my own case, I applied to only one school. So what I would advise is that look for other schools that is offering the same course of study that you are going for or something similar. And then look for something that makes the school you applied to, the school that gave you admission, stand out from all these other schools. You can also be asked, why did you choose your school? So when you are asked this question, you should do your research um, about your university, about the department. You want to know the specific things that makes this school stand out from other schools. 
Because the truth is that there are a lot of schools that can offer you what you are going for. But why are you choosing this particular school? Why are you choosing University A and not University B? So you want to look at things such as maybe the student-teacher ratio. You want to look at the modules that you are going to be taking. Is there a specific module that stands out to you that this other university is not offering? For example, I'm doing a degree in food science and nutrition. There might be another university that is just offering food science only. So I can tell them that, okay, for my university, I'm going to learn more about human nutrition. But for this other university, they are not going to teach me about human nutrition. So just look for things that make this school stand out from the other school. That doesn't mean the other school is bad. But then you need to look for something. Just look for something. Look for something. It might be that, okay, maybe for five consecutive years, they've been the leading institution in this social field. It may even be that the university you are applying to is the leading institution in that degree that you are doing. So you want to use that to tell them that, okay, this is why I applied to the school. Another tricky question is, why Poland and not the likes of UK, US and Canada? Do your research. So you might give them information such as, okay, maybe the degree that you're going to get in Poland is recognized all over the world. So it's going to get you the same opportunity that you're going to get either in US, UK, Canada. Look for, you know, just... Do your research and look for points that will be convincing to whoever is interviewing so that they will know that, yeah, this person knows why they are coming into Poland. One information I want to chip in is that um, when you are studying in Poland, you have the opportunity of going for exchange program. That is, you can study a year in Poland and then go to another country to study another semester. If you are going to, um, let's say, Canada, it might not be easy for you to do an exchange program. But if you are coming into Poland, you can do an exchange program in another country and this is going to help you. You can also be asked the duration of your program. So if your program is for one year, one and a half year or two years, just tell them. Also, you need to know some specific things about your course of study as it relates to Poland, the EU and also your home country. If you are going for a degree in maybe agricultural science, you want to know the kind of crops that they grow in Poland. You want to know how these crops are different from the one back in your home country. If you're going for nursing, you want to know how the nursing in Poland is different from the one in your home country. Like how can you even get registered as a nurse in Poland? Things like that. Just know some specific things about your course of study as it relates to Poland, the EU in general, and your home country. Another thing you can take note of is the names of your lecturers. So go on your university website, go on the departmental website, try to get the names of your professors. If you cannot pronounce this name, put the name either on Google Translate or on Google and let Google pronounce the names for you. And last but not the least, you can be asked some mathematical question and also asked to identify some countries on a blank map of Europe. The math question is pretty straightforward. It can just ask you simple questions like 4 multiplied by 4, what is the square root of 25 plus the square root of 25? Easy questions like that. So they can ask you like, what is 20 plus 1 divided by 4 multiplied by this? They just want you to think and use B-O-D-M-A-S to solve that question. And also when it comes to the blank map of Europe, you are going to be given a blank map of Europe and you're going to be instructed to identify some countries on the map. So what I'm going to advise is that when you're identifying this country, please let Poland be the number one country you're going to be identifying. And then you can look for other countries that share the same border with Poland and then any other countries that seems easy for you. In some cases, they might tell you identify four countries. In some cases, they might tell you identify five countries. And in some cases, they might not tell you any number. They will just tell you just identify country, identify as much as possible if you are told to identify four identify four and that is it so for the math question and for the map of europe you are going to be given an a4 paper so on the a4 paper a blank map is already there and below the blank map whoever is interviewing you is going to write out some math question and you'll be expected to just write out your answer trust me these questions 
they are pretty straightforward. There's nothing difficult with it at all. The most important thing is the questions that you'll be asked about your school, what you're going to study, who your sponsor is, why you're going to study this course, and the like. Most importantly, please involve God because sometimes when you get where you're going to be interviewed, even though you are well prepared, you might be tense and forget some answer. When God is involved in all these things, he makes it easy for you i hope this video helps you if this video has been of help to you please share like comment and also subscribe to my channel i will see you in another video bye for now